Okay, thanks very much um, for this opportunity to talk to such a diverse and interesting audience. Um, I won't be playing with code like Tim, um, but uh, looking uh, more at, at the outcomes of uh, working uh, with an IT team that has enabled us to take advantage of the tremendous capacities of web technologies for uh, advancing humanities research today. Um, I'm uh, <coughs> directing the prosecution project. This is a project that's been going for about five years. Um, we were funded by the Australian Research Council in 2013 uh, to conduct an investigation into the history of the criminal trial in Australia, the history of criminal prosecution. So uh, the funding uh, enabled the gathering of a research team, a number of people headed by myself, a couple of research fellows, PhD students, um, research assistants of various kinds. Um, so it, it's quite a large team in terms of the usual experience of uh, humanities disciplines and offers tremendous capacity for developing our research. So we're historians, um, we're interested in crime. Uh, what are the main sources of our data? Well, Tim's just pointed to the fantastic resource of Trove, a key resource you could, without even having the Australian archives and original court records, you could do a lot of what we want to do in our project just through using the resources of Trove. And uh, I might say something uh, about that uh, later in terms of our current experience of working with some uh, researchers uh, outside Australia who are using Trove as a way of getting into Australian history. Um, but as historians, uh, we value working with archives, with original sources, as one of the means of getting to uh, the histories, the stories that we want to uh, talk about. And so um, conventionally, of course, uh, historians have worked uh, with uh, paper and pen. Uh, more than any time, more than 10 years ago, you would generally have had to uh, just go into an archive with paper and pen. The, the most technology you might see there uh, would be a microfilm reader. If, they, if you're unfortunate enough to be working with records that they had microfilmed and they wouldn't allow you to look at originals, you'd be looking at microfilms. Fortunately, those microfilms now in the last uh, 10 or 15 years have increasingly been digitised themselves, so they've produced scanned images that can become the resources for a project like ours. Um, I might just show you very quickly uh, the inside of our project as a, a research uh, everyday practice. This is the core of, of what we work with every day. This is a project that is interested in working at the case level, uh, in understanding the process by which somebody was arrested and charged with a crime and then process through a court system with the possible outcome of being convicted and then sent to prison for a certain period of time. And uh, even before 1967 in Australia, uh, being uh, possibly vulnerable to execution. And we have quite a few uh, thousand people in our cases uh, who in fact were sentenced to death. Um, we work uh, with a system which was designed as a collaboration between the researchers and uh, IT uh, people at Griffith eResearch Services. And um, what we wanted to do was to be able to uh, work with a distributed research team um, at possibly a number of places around the country. So we wanted to use the web technologies um, and the sharing of resources uh, to enable us to build a database um, from any web connected uh, computer. And uh, this is the interface that was designed over a period of time, uh, very intensive work uh, uh, with our IT uh, collaborators 
uh, meeting weekly and fortnightly. In fact, we're still doing it after five years, constantly um, re-evaluating, redeveloping parts of it. Um, what we do is take um, particular uh, images that we've had digitised, um, and I'll give you an example from uh, the New South Wales courts. We have these digitised images which are delivered to the desktop of um, researchers or a community of volunteers that we recruited through the project um, and who uh, are given these records to transcribe into the structured uh, form that you see there. Um, the system was designed um, with a lot of um, capacity for the researchers to uh, vary the range of attributes uh, for any particular research collection, depending on the nature of the uh, records in each state. Um, and, uh, and then to uh, edit uh, over time as we needed to um, the records that are produced. Um, we're dealing really with uh, originally just with Supreme Court records for six states of Australia but the capacity of the project has grown considerably over this period of time when more and more data is becoming available for use in this kind of project. Um, so, uh, for example, with uh, Tim Sherratt's help, in fact, using uh, an earlier stage of his trove harvester, um, we've been able to access the metadata of the huge collection of courts martial records in Australian military theatres in the 20th century, and we're starting work on that uh, currently. Um, most of these other uh, records uh, relate to particular state jurisdictions. Um, in addition to the Supreme Court records, we've been accessing things like the Queensland Moreton Bay Colony records, um, which are preserved in uh, the form of a, a small number of registers and which have been transcribed by uh, uh, a community historian and uh, we've been able to access the data for those off the Queensland Government Open Data site. Um, there are other resources like the Police Gazettes, uh, which um, we access um, uh, sometimes through research collaborations with other partners. Uh, Hamish Maxwell Stewart at the University of Tasmania has been doing a lot of work with uh, different Police Gazette records. And then we also have um, now increasing numbers of prison records being digitised by some of the archives. We've done a lot of work with the Victorian female prison registers, which were digitised by the Public Record Office of Victoria. Uh, wonderful, very comprehensive collection, absolutely world-class digitisation project at the archive level, um, which will enable us uh, eventually to have a very comprehensive history of uh, crime and imprisonment in Victoria over about an 80 year period from, from the 1850s. So that's a tremendous range of resources there that's been built up uh, over a period of time during which the digital landscape um, has been changing with these uh, cultural collections in, in archives and through other sources including Trove. Um, a significant development since um, the beginning of the project and the design of the original interface was the development of the Trove API, um, which we now use to search for um, materials that may relate to the particular case that we are investigating. So in this case, this um, prisoner, Annie Wise, uh, who um, would uh, have uh, a trial date here. You can see in 1881, the uh, Trove API enables us to semi-automate a search on the data about Annie Wise um, for that particular year and throws up a number of results which we can then inspect. And uh, it looks like we've got the first hit there, um, 
recording um, the, the possible information, we can copy that link uh, back into the record and it becomes uh, a permanent part of that um, uh, uh, record for future use. Um, I'll just put it in there. Oh, there's the Trove link there. Increasingly, um, these records are now available through a public search site. And this is our public uh, web page. And the most important feature of it is this uh, search uh, facility, which is a live facility. So records that are being created today, if they fall within the access period that we release, which is up to 1922, because of various archival restrictions, uh, then uh, that data will become available um, uh, through this particular um, search page. Um, how am I going for time? Um, yeah, a few minutes. Okay, I might just um, highlight a couple of other important uh, linkages um, that have uh, being developed in the course of the project as we've gone along. Again, these are things that have become possible uh, really quite recently and were not something that we considered uh, at the outset of the project in 2013. But with a, a team of developers um, through the NCRIS funded RDS project uh, over the last couple of years, we've worked with um, uh, a, a couple of the cultural institutions on an API that will enable cultural institutions to access our indexes of these uh, court trials uh, for their own uh, collections. So many people may know the very impressive Tasmanian Names Index, um, which uh, aggregates uh, the search facility across a huge range of their records uh, to enable people to search for family members in the Tasmanian records. Um, the Tahoe uh, Tasmanian Archives and Heritage Office is now using the API that was developed through what's called the Hass Devil Project um, to access uh, relevant records in our Tasmanian register. Uh, and you can see an example here of a, a particular a uh, uh, person whose record has been digitised in the Tasmanian archives, um, but at their level is only searchable manually, but because we have indexed the records, they now have an uh, exact page reference uh, for those records. So that uh, increased uh, record discovery enabled through that API on the very valuable feature of the project. And now uh, Trove itself is uh, importing, uh, harvesting our records to supplement their um, people and organisation zone. And uh, I'll just show you uh, very quickly a, a search you can do on Paul Keating in people and organisations, produces a well-known <laughs> Australian member of the federal parliament, uh, but also this guy, Paul Keating, um, who appears in the prosecution project uh, indexes and was prosecuted in, uh, in Ballarat in 1862 for impersonating a voter. Uh, the person he uh, uh, impersonated was somebody called Ronald McDonald, believe it or not. Um, so that trove um, use of the API is another very important um, uh, outcome of, of this project of improving access and sharing the data from our project to the wider community, not just for the use of researchers, uh, but for the general community, uh, the many uh, hundreds of thousands of people who are searching Trove every week for different kinds of information about things that are important to them. Uh, how are we going for time? Five minutes. Five minutes. Um, Okay, I might, um, uh, that's highlighted the um, uh, links to the Tasmanian registers. If I 
go back to the um, home page. Uh, one other thing that we've been working on, uh, again, is a, a live um, interaction with our data to um, present the statistical overview and uh, enable queries in uh, the record set um, according to particular um, features, uh, depending on uh, what people may be interested in. So we may be interested in murder in, in New South Wales between um, 1860 and uh, 1920 and uh, you hope if I uh, right, we'll just look at the general category of homicide. Um, We're now increasingly doing a lot of work to uh, improve the range of data that is able to be visualised through this. For example, this um, facility at the moment simply records the raw numbers of appearances. Um, over time, of course, what will be important will be to present those in terms of, of um, appearance rates per head of population. Uh, so that will be a future part of the development of the project. Um, the project uh, has recruited, um, finally I might talk a little bit about um, its community volunteers. From an early stage, um, we realised that the volume of records uh, was beyond the research team's capacity um, and we'd be uh, another 50 years before we got anywhere near uh, the um, uh, recording of the, the data we wanted to access. So we wrote to every um, local history and family history society in Australia to see whether there were people interested in assisting in the project. We got very good response. Um, we had very good uh, assistance, particularly from a number of the archives, the uh, uh, Victorian archives, Tasmania, um, and Queensland, and uh, notably we got a, a, a community historical society in Karnamar in Western Australia, which came on board with about 80 volunteers who had constantly engaged in, in digital projects and had become expert transcribers. And they in fact have ended up assisting us to uh, enter data for more than 90,000 cases across a range of materials, uh, not just Western Australia, which we in fact had completed very early, but, but uh, Victorian and Queensland material. And, and this is an outcome of um, the development of a, a community of, of shared interest between researchers and general users who are interested in local history and family history and genealogy. Um, a very important development, which has only been made possible through the presence of this project uh, on the web and enabled by um, the sharing of data out of the archives um, through digitisation. That's probably enough uh, for me to, to uh, talk about at this stage. I look forward to any questions that people may have here or, or afterwards about the project. Thank you.